Okay, now that your board has been uh, milled and the solder mask has been applied, we want to prepare the board for doing soldering. And, and the first bit of soldering we're going to talk about is the surface mount soldering. In any soldering process, it's very important that the copper be clean. Whether we're talking about plumbing soldering or, or PC board soldering, we must have that clean. Sometimes after the solder mask process, there's a residue that's left on the copper and we want to make sure that's cleaned off. If it's kind of heavy or thick residue, we can take an X-Acto knife and kind of go on to the pad and just kind of scrape off any of that residue that's left. Once that's done, we can use like a scrubby to scrub it off or some steel wool, which is a little more aggressive and clean the surface off of the board. Once that's done, we also have a product made by LPKF that allows us to spray the board, and we would do this over at the sink, spray the board, and that also cleans the copper, kind of as your final cleaning. Okay, once it's all clean, now we're ready to begin the process. Now we always want to do surface mount parts before we do any through hole stuff, because surface mount parts will be soldered all at once in an oven. So we want to make sure we always do surface mount first, before we add any of our through hole parts. Okay, now we're going to prepare the board for surface mounting the parts. The first thing we're going to use is a little flex pen. And flex is a compound that is used to clean the copper and it makes the solder adhere better to the board. So I'm going to take wherever I have little pads and I'm just going to put like a little dab of flex on there. And you'll see the flex is kind of a clear liquid that applies on there. So I'm just going to go around to different pads and do that. And I'd want to do that to all my surface mount pads. Once I get them all fluxed, the next thing I'm now I'm next thing I want to do is now apply my solder paste. And we have solder paste available. It's in a little syringe like this. And I want to uh, take my solder paste now. You notice it's got a little pointed tip, and I want to start putting just a dab of solder paste onto the pad. Okay, so we'll get a little solder paste here going. Again, we just want a little dab on the pad. So I'll do that around to a couple pads. And steady. Next, we're ready to start placing the parts on after we apply the solder paste. <clears throat> to do that, you'll need some tweezers or something to pick it up. Now, surface mount parts have usually the value marked on one side and not on the other. I always try to put the value up and I try to face all the parts the same way. It makes it a lot easier during the inspection process. So I'm going to pick up my part now and I'm going to take it over where I've solder pasted and stick that part onto the board. I want to make sure my part is straight and that it's pushed all the way down onto the board. Now I've placed that particular part onto the board. You'll want to do that for all the remaining surface mount parts that are on your board. Again, when you go to place your next part, make sure that you put the value up and that it's facing exactly the same way. Uh, during the inspection process, that'll make it easier for ensuring that you have all the right values in the right place on your board. Okay, now that you've uh, placed all your uh, surface mount parts onto the board, you'll bring them into the reflow oven. Little drawer in the reflow oven, it's already pre-programmed, you don't have to program it any. You can set your board into the drawer, close the drawer, and just hit run, and it'll automatically solder your board. It takes approximately 10 minutes to reflow solder your board, and then it'll be complete, and you'll be able to come and take out your board and go to the next process of putting in through hole parts into your board. Okay, now that we've uh, got the surface mounts on them, and of course this one doesn't, but we'll pretend that we've already done the surface mount. Again, you always want to do surface mount before through hole. Now we're ready to do some through hole. So first thing I want to do, make sure my board is clean and then start placing in the parts. On integrated circuits and capacitors, make sure that you have your polarities in the correct form. <clears throat> so we'll just, for example, plug in an IC socket there. For example, plug in a potentiometer I like to always pre-bend, if I'm using resistors and capacitors, I always like to pre-bend the leads. So take a pair of pliers and do that. 
try not to put too much stress on the part and pull the lead out of the part. It can cause some intermittent problems later on. And then go ahead and mount, mount the uh, part into the board. Okay, so once you've got your parts mounted into the board, now we're ready to actually solder the other side. <clears throat> so solder uh, comes in several different thicknesses and different compositions. Each different type of solder has different melting points. Standard 6040, which is 60% uh, tin, 40% lead, melts at about 370 degrees. Other forms of solder melt at different temperatures. You can always look up the spec sheet for your particular type of solder to see where its melting point is. <clears throat> so choose whichever thickness is appropriate for the type of job that you're doing. If we're doing fine work on a board, we want to have a thin solder. If we're doing bigger things, we can use a little thicker solder on the part. <clears throat> Prepare your iron by turning the iron on, and I always like to uh, make sure that there's always solder applied onto the tip. You'll notice that the tip is kind of smoking a little bit. What that is is the actual flux material that's inside the center of the, the solder. And that's, again, used to clean the tip and to clean the copper on the PC board for better adhesion of the solder. In our lab, we have uh, water bottles that we can use to uh, wet the sponge. You don't want to soak it, you just want to make it damp so you can clean off the tip as you solder. In some of our labs, we have uh, kind of like a Brillo pad type, brass pad. Those you do not have to apply water to. You can just use them as they are. Don't put water into those. Only water on the sponge soldering irons. Once you've got your parts placed, now we're going to flip it over to the back side and we want to begin the soldering process. So we'll clean off our iron, and now we'll get ready to actually do the solder. Okay, here in our lab we have several stands. I'm using a little thing called Helping Hands. It has some alligator clips to hold the board. We also have some bigger ones here for holding boards as well. So we just want to have something mount our board there. Okay, if you remember previously, I applied a bunch of solder onto my iron. So what I'm going to do is uh, wipe off the soldering iron. Now you notice that I've got it set at about 70. And I, I found for this Weller iron for kind of general purpose soldering, that's a pretty good point. Don't turn it all the way up so it cooks the tip. Or if you turn it too low, it won't be hot enough to melt that. So I found that pretty good for kind of general purpose soldering on a PC board. Remember I had applied some uh, solder to the tip and you've seen it smoking in previously. Now I want to wipe that off and now it leaves my tip nice and clean on the iron. I'm going to apply just a tad of solder onto the end of the soldering iron to help me uh, transfer heat from the soldering iron onto the board. I'm going to touch the soldering iron on both the pin that I'm trying to solder and the pad and I'll add just a little bit of solder to that and pull it off. You notice that it kind of dipped down along the side of the pad there. So you can just go around and, and start soldering those different pads, okay? So I'll solder that the one. I've got a little resistor over here with the lead sticking out. I'll solder that little pad, okay? You notice that I'm not putting on lots and lots of solder. You don't need to apply a lot of solder to the board, just a little bit, and it should be kind of a little curve up to the part lead. Once you get that done, if you're not going to be soldering for a little while, go ahead and add some more solder back onto your iron tip so that it keeps your tip nice and clean when you're ready to go use it again. Always put solder onto that tip when you're going to leave it set. Now that you've soldered your, your uh, different components, things like an integrated socket, you don't need to trim, but if it has a lead sticking up, you can just take a little pair of flush cutters and cut that lead off so that it's kind of smooth with the board. Okay, sometimes after you've uh, made your solder joints, maybe you've made a mistake or you put too much solder on, or maybe you got the part in backwards or something, and you want to remove that particular part. We have two type things. We have solder suckers like this that you push down, and then you set this on there as you're applying heat and press the button. I don't actually like to use these on PC boards because it usually ends up overheating the pad and then you end up destroying your board. A much better product is what they call solder wick. 
And solder wick is just a braid of copper, but it's impregnated with flux. And you could take this braided solder, take your soldering iron, and place it over a particular area that you want to unsolder, heat it up, and you'll notice what happens here on the braid is that the braid sucked up all the solder and now left my hole unsoldered there. This is a great way, and you've seen how fast I was able to do it, to actually remove all the solder on the board for the areas that you want to replace or if you want to remove a part. Again, you don't want to leave the heat too long on the board. You'll cause the adhesive that holds the copper onto the board to come up and lift off, and then you'll have an open run on your PC board. So just use the heat sparingly. I always kind of like to spread a little bit, set it over the pin, and then apply the heat. And you'll see it as you're watching it. It'll be sucking that solder up, and you'll see it appear on your actual solder wick. Again, this is a great product for using when you're working on a PC board. If you have bigger leads or something onto a connector or something, then you can use the actual solder sucker. Okay, now <clears throat> let's say we've, uh, we've completed our board. So here's what a board, uh, my board would end up looking like all completed. You can see here were our surface mount parts that we first applied onto the board. And they're down here. Again, you always want to do surface mount before through hole parts. So all my surface mount is mounted, and then I added all my parts and soldered the back of the board. Then I went, in this case, I applied sockets. Then I applied all my integrated circuits into the board. I always suggest if you're going to do through hole parts that you might want to always use integrated circuit sockets. That way, if your integrated circuit goes bad or something, you can pull it out and remove it. Plus, when you're soldering, you're not applying heat into the actual integrated circuit. So there's kind of an example of our completed board with both surface mount parts and through hole parts located on the board.